Today, the House of Representatives Standing Committee on Health, Aged Care and Sport delivered its report on the approval processes for new drugs and novel medical technologies in Australia. Today, I present the report of the Standing Committee of Health, Aged Care and Sport entitled The New Frontier, Delivering Better Health to All Australians. It's quite a weighty tome. Over the, past the committee was chaired by Trent Zimmerman MP and Deputy Chair Dr Mike Freelander MP. I often talk about bipartisanship in this place and this committee was uh, really an exemplar of how bipartisanship can deliver uh, wonderful outcomes and I, I, I commend... Um, Australian Health Journal spoke with the Deputy Chair of the committee, Dr Mike Freelander MP. This inquiry was our, our largest one into how the Australian government, the federal government, approves um, the use of and payment for new uh, treatments, uh, including new drugs, new devices and uh, novel technologies and treatments uh, for the Australian population. We thought that this was um, a very wide ranging um, inquiry and uh, um, it was a real privilege to be a part of it. In the last 10 years, it's become apparent that uh, our science has regressed to the point where our um, individualised care for a whole range of illnesses, ranging from uh, uh, cancers through to neuromuscular disorders, is based on genetics and genomics, and we will have indi individualised treatment for most of the disorders that we see in healthcare in the future and our system whilst it was designed um, 20, 30, 40 years ago uh, needs to be um, updated so that we can cope with this uh, uh, tsunami of genetic and genomic treatments. Medicine is changing very, very much. I've worked as a paediatrician in my electorate for almost 40 years and I've seen enormous changes uh, occurring in healthcare over all that time, but in the last few years, there really has been dramatic changes, uh, including dramatic changes in the sorts of drugs we use, in uh, the treatments for some of the genetic disorders that pedi pediatricians see. And these changes are happening very, very rapidly. But what, was what is happening in Australia is that there has been concern expressed about timely access to some of the new new treatments, uh, such as uh, treatments for some of the neuromuscular disorders, epilepsy, some of the new treatments for cancers, particularly in paediatrics, but also in adult medicine. So uh, the Australian system was designed quite a long time ago, many decades ago, um, of drug approval and device approval. And uh, it is increasingly apparent that change needs to occur to get Australians timely access to the newest possible treatments. This report examines the opportunities to deliver better health care for Australians through our regulatory and health technology assessment process for both medicines and technologies. With innovation happening at a fast pace, governments at both the state and federal level have a duty to ensure that Australians continue to have access quickly to medicines and medical technology and that our health systems facilitate that outcome rather than hinder it. Medical innovation has grown exponentially in recent years and pharmaceutical and medtech companies are eager to bring new medicines and devices to market as efficiently as possible. The committee heard from clinical experts and patient groups and their families who urge us to support a more flexible system to provide for timely access to the latest medicines, devices and treatments. During the inquiry, the committee received more than 200 submissions and held 13 days of public hearings in several capital cities. What uh, I think the, the most important uh, uh, thing that's come out of our report is the importance of patient-centred care and the importance of a uh, uh, cooperative and collaborative approach to healthcare in the 21st century. The committee heard from patients and their families about the need for more patient involvement in the approvals decision making process for new drugs and novel medical technologies. Patients do have a crucial perspective on what treatments work best for them, including important lifestyle benefits, but this has traditionally not been given enough attention within the regulatory system. The committee recommends reforms that will strengthen the central role that patients should have in that assessment process. 
I would like to also thank the in industry groups, from the MTAA to the Medicines Australia, to all the industry groups that presented to us. They did it in a, in a uh, feeling of camaraderie and of goodwill with the best outcomes for Australian patients at the forefront. The engagement has been absolutely astounding. And not only has uh, the engagement been widespread from uh, Department of Health, uh, industry, patients, uh, patient support groups, a whole range of, of, of um, stakeholders, the engagement has been very, very collegiate. We've been impressed with the way that people have come together and, and you know, there is some often conflict in the way uh, drugs and other treatments are approved because of the cost, mainly the cost issue. But the way people have come together to try and make sure that Australia develops the world's best practice system has been absolutely wonderful. I have learnt an enormous amount um, about the, the, the medicine in particular, but also about the way how groups uh, can come together and cooperate to give the information to people who will be ultimately responsible for approve the approval process. Clinical trials are another area where Australia has strong, considerably strong comparative advantages. However, the committee has recommended changes to streamline the system even further and ensure Australia is, a, Australia is an attractive location for clinical trials. This includes the immediate harmonisations of ethics and governance approvals into one online platform and the establishment of a national registry. It was clear to the committee that there was a great deal of momentum behind the push to improve the regulatory and reimbursement system, not just a general desire for change, but a wealth of ideas for reform and a willingness to make the efforts and compromises necessary to implement them. Titled The New Frontier, Delivering Better Health for All Australians, the bipartisan report makes 31 recommendations to reform Australia's system in the areas of regulation and reimbursement to help patients receive faster access to the latest medicines and technologies. But the importance now lies in us being able to make sure whoever is in government take these uh, recommendations on board, develop them, fund them, and have them as, as a basis of our modern healthcare in Australia.